everyone. Welcome back to episode 39 of Talk of Fame Podcast. I'm Kylie, and today we have an amazing NBA contributor, YouTube entertainment reporter, and sports media professional in the Boston area, Tara Brownski. Thanks for coming on, Tyler. I'm so happy to have you on. Oh, thank you, Kylie. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be on your show today. Of course. I'm so happy to have you on. So over the last kind of two years, we've kind of been in isolation. So what is something that, that you did over the last two years that you kind of won't have time to do before? That's a good question. Um, can I say like spending time with my family? And I'll explain <laughs> why. Because um, I graduated in college in October 2019. I was living in Florida the last couple of years. And my family's from Connecticut. That's where I'm from originally. So after college, you know, still looking for that, like, big full-time job out of, out of college. Um, so I just went back home to Connecticut. And then, you know, through that period, um, actually laying, got my job in the Boston area, like, right before COVID happened, like, the week before COVID happened. And I was planning to move to Boston, uh, but then COVID happened. So that all got delayed. So I was still stuck at home in Connecticut for another several months later. So almost like a year, if I think about it. Uh, so really got to spend a lot of time with my family that I didn't, you know, see just for uh, get to see so often just being in Florida and then being in Connecticut. So I felt like back in high school uh, during that isolation period, um, just being back in my like childhood bedroom and, you know, just all that that comes with that. So I'll say that uh, spending some time with my family, uh, which is also, you know, that was like a good time too. everyone's, of course, like, you know, worry about your the health and safety of your loved ones. So it was actually nice in a way too to be really close with them. Yeah, so that, that was like the biggest part about kind of quarantining is I like get to spend time with your family. I like when during when COVID first hit, I didn't see my family off. Yeah, I lived with my family balanced and my kind of my close family. And right. so that was kind of like the biggest part is I see my family off and I'm happy I got to do make more connections throughout like um in the industry of course but like before I, um, before even COVID even hit, we were talking about a little bit about kind of sports so before we even started. Like I was just at Philly's spring training in Florida before we court, like before COVID even. Oh, before happened. COVID happened. Wow. Yeah, like I like once like we went in February and got back in like beginning of March, and then a couple of days later, COVID hit. So I was like, yeah. well, okay, that's what are we going to do now? I can't go anywhere. Baseball shut down. Sports are shut down. Like, <laughs> how am I going to do it? And so, I, like, we were talking about the Red Sox kind of before. I'm a re big Red Sox fan, like, Kiki Hernandez fan. Ask where yeah. you go. Like, I'm very good friends. Ask where you go. And so, like, yeah, we, I've like been him a few times. It's amazing. Like, he's one of my best buddies and stuff. He's amazing. But like, what is it kind of like for you to kind of work in the Boston area and to meet kind of the players? Um, it's really cool because I did actually grow up a Boston sports fan. So the fact that, you know, it just worked out that I landed in the Boston sports media market. It's like, it's just funny how things align sometimes. So, um, so it's, it, it's cool. And it's just like a little weird and surreal at the same time when you're at Fenway Park and you're in, you're interacting with the guys. Um, and I have been doing this career for a while. So the process wasn't anything new. Like I've been covering like minor league baseball teams for a while, being around players often. Um, and the procedure is still the same, but it's just a little bit more surreal and weird where it's players you looked up to and you grew up rooting for. And um, now you're in a way like working alongside them as part of the media. Um, so yeah, it's been really cool. Like getting to know like all the Red Sox guys, um, recently with the Patriots um been doing a lot of that lately um so yeah just like it's just so surreal because like these are my these are my favorite players and now like I have you know an end with them and like they know me now and that's kind of weird too it's like you, you keep showing up and you build this relationship with those guys and um I feel like it's also a good time for me now too because I'm 23 and we got a lot of young rising stars in the Boston media um Boston sports teams, I should say. Um, Mac Jones is 23. Um, we were talking about Alex Verdugo earlier. I think he's 24. So it's like a bunch of young guys that are my age. So it's like we're kind of – obviously, they have a much cooler job there of players. But, like, you know, we're, like – we're in the same stage of life, and, you know, we're both doing our own thing and, like, just, you know, we're not from Boston originally. So it's like – I don't know. You have, like, a weird connection that way too, just, like, on a personal level. It's like um, just going through the – 
the learning experiences together in a big city like this that's really passionate about their uh, their sports. Yeah, for sure. My like, I went to the camp. My first time at Family Park was actually last year in June. I just remember, like, he's always wanted to go to Family Park. I, like, I went to see the Do- not the Dodgers, uh, Red Sox and Phillies play. He's my family's Phillies oh. fan. So, and and I'm like a big Red Sox fan. Other than the Dodgers, like, they're my favorite team. Other than the Dodgers, so I was like, why not let's go get a little yeah. trip? Like, it's only like a five hour drive from where I am, and okay. so it wasn't that far. And so you just went, like, I knew kind of, I met Alex Verdugo once. And so I met, like, I met him when he was a Dodger. So okay. Like, before we, I met him at Fan Fest a couple, like, about three weeks before you even got traded, I met him. So I basically knew oh, no him way. before basically everything kind of went off, like the Mickey Best, David Price trade, and all yeah. that stuff happened. And so, like, it, like when I met him and when I went down to Fenway, I met him. I we talked for the two days when I was down there, and we just kind of created a good kind of friendship. We talked and remembered me from the day before. Like we just were talking for like ten minutes each day. Like he was a awesome. good guy, and he remembered me. Like we been, he's planning on having like send me stuff like Boston gear and stuff, which I'm very excited about. <sighs> he's like, it's like good at connection. You know, it's he's like, oh, I know you have this. I need to do something. So I'm very excited. That, See what yeah, I, I love Duke. I love Doogie so much. And like, he's really good with like interacting with the fans. And you see like this past season, him like viral clips of him interacting with the fans. Like I think there was a clip like when they played Minnesota in April of last year and him just like uh, some fan in stands like asking him about like his like hitting approach or like something oh, yeah. like that. Um, I forget exactly what the question was, but it's just like Doogie really taking the time to like explain what he's thinking in the box to this fan. It's like, I don't see any like other players doing that type of stuff, that type of uh, interaction and, um, you know, with the fans. And he just, he just loves it. He just loves feeding off it. That's why he's kind of perfect for a city like Boston. Um, just cause fans, fans embrace people like that. Um, so I've enjoyed getting to know him. He's easily one of my favorite dudes on the team. And from a media perspective, one of the best, like, quotes, a uh, very honest type of guy and mm-hmm. just always has something interesting. So he's definitely been one of my my favorite dudes that yeah, I've gotten absolutely. to know here. Like, he's, like, pretty, like, I met him, like, he waved to me a few times at games. Like, he's did, like, a lot of things to kind of show support. And he's, I don't know when, but I don't know, like, I guess he's, like, creating stuff with the boss and Red Sox and creating stuff for me to come down or something. I'm not sure what the plans are having as well. Okay. Like, but I'm supposed to come, maybe come down to a game or something. I have no idea what yeah. he has plans. So I don't want to make it like that serious. We'll find out. We'll find like, out. Like, I remember what? just, like, in shock when I found out. He was, like, saying, hey, I'm going to set you up with stuff. Like, send me a message on Instagram. Like, do that. I'm like, oh, wow. my God. Like, That's what's up. Let's go. Like, I never, like, I, like, I never had connections. This is what I get from going to a lot of sports games. Like, I'm yeah. going to here, I guess. Um, Absolutely. Because Absolutely, I just, just grew up with him as a kid, and now like I'm basically friends with them, and it's kind of like a little. It's weird. really cool, right? Like it's cool, but weird. Think myself like I grew up watching this guy ever since I became a Dodger fan. Now I'm basically friends with the guy. I met him, basically good, good friends with them. I'm thinking to myself like this is really weird, like weird, weird to think about. It takes a moment to get used to, or, you know, you never fully get used to it, but I guess you, you learn how to deal with it. But yeah, it's, it's surreal. I, I get the feeling for sure. Um, and I feel the same way too, honestly, like talking to a guy like Xander, I'm like, geez, I've been watching Xander as a fan in the stands since even in, when he was in the minor leagues in 2013. And now I'm like the last couple of years, like interviewing him and just talking to him, you know, off the record casually at the field. I'm like, oh man, that's just, you know, pinch pinch myself moments type of deal like because I, I can just imagine a few years ago like just watching him on tv and it's like yeah now you get to know these guys it's it's pretty cool mm-hmm, for sure so as i kind of mentioned before you are a content producer in the boston area what kind of made you want to start being a content producer um uh, well in high school um i grew up near like a minor league baseball team it's called the bridgeport bluefish um and i would just go to a lot of games there uh and decided one day, like, oh, yeah, I'm starting to get to know the players, actually kind of like you, just like going as a fan and them just seeing me and I get the autographs and stuff. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm starting to get to know these guys. Like, why not? I would love to, like, interview them one day. And I'm just, I just created a YouTube channel. I uh, eventually did one interview with a guy named Luis Lopez, played in the majors for a little bit with Toronto. Um, and I just loved it so much. I was like, this is so cool, like, to get a one-on-one time with a player and ask him anything I want. Um, it just was 
really special and fun. So I just kept doing that. And then was like at the minor league field, like every day, uh, like pretty much to do interviews just for my YouTube channel at the time. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just like, I like doing this a lot. Um, and then start traveling like around that league, like in New York, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, in the Atlantic league. And it was probably, um, when I was like a senior, um, in high school. And then, you know, you start thinking about like, okay, what do I want to do in college? And I was like, oh shoot, I could actually do this like as a career. Like, yeah, like, let me look into it. So, um, then went to like the Dan Patrick school sports casting in Orlando and, um, yeah, that's kind of like when I really took it seriously, I would say too. And I'm sure we'll get into that. But it was it was early in high school, like just pursuing it and spending a lot of time at the field. Um, but then it was like, yeah, like once I was a senior high school, I was like, all right, let's 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 pursue this as a career if that's a possibility. And I, I felt like I could. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, so I, I basically grew up in a sports atmosphere. My brother, my whole family played sports in many ways. I grew up playing baseball, basketball, basically oh, everything. Right. And so I basically grew up in like a sports atmosphere. You know, I was basically at a baseball field every single day. Yeah. Like what? Either me playing on the field or just watching my brother oh, practice or one of his games. So I was always out the fields in some type of way. And so like my family's uh, Phillies fans, as I kind of mentioned before, we were mm -hmm. we live about two hours east from Philadelphia, and so we go to games often. Cool. So we, before COVID hit, like we went to Philly spring training and all those things. I started building kind of connections with the players, like my, mostly minor leaguers, who are all like the yeah. um, AAA, AA, and all those things. And I became really good friends with like two of the players. And I recently had one guys on here that okay, like, I've awesome. been really good friends with. Um, since that day I met him, we just became good friends, and that was like the best thing to think. Like that's like the best thing to do as like a journalist or in general, is to make connections and build friends with, friendships with the players. Because that's why I love it. It's like they can help you. Like, if, like with baseball, if you need advice, like that's what you go for. That's what, kind of what I love it, about going to games and stuff. Because I live um, about 15 minutes away from the Rail Riders. Um, okay, yeah. So it's very Rail Riders. Granted. And so that's a Yankees minor league team. So I, I go to games a lot their games off and I grew up as a kid and going to the games and after I asked for autographs uh -huh. guys I actually met Derek Cheater actually when he played oh no I, way yeah he's in a rehab years. game nice yeah rehab games so I met him I don't remember meeting him though but my dad said I met him uh -huh. I don't actually remember meeting him but like so they I take I, dad's word for it so that's really yeah. cool yeah, I mean that's what I, I love I, about like yeah the minor league fields and uh spring training like it's it's so accessible to talk to players and you know especially if you keep showing up on a regular basis get to know them and then yeah like later in uh light you know life actually it's like the same way now like i've know a bunch of dudes when i was in the covering minor leagues that are maybe in the big leagues now whether they're playing still or they're um coaching now these days it's like you build those relationships with the with dudes and like that is the most fun part of it uh i i agree with that for sure yeah, for sure. So you got to work with kind of like a lot of athletes over the last couple of years. Who was your like person that you got the chance to work with? Oh, that's tough. Um, I don't know, like all time. I'll just think think of some recently. Like um, Chris Sale was one I really enjoyed um, this past year. I had a real, really cool moment with him where, uh, you know, Fenway's completely em empty, like before the game. It's like a really nice, like summer afternoon game. And it was just, be it was just like such a beautiful day. And he's the only one warming up, um, doing it. He, he, after his, um, start day, he, the next day, he like just jogs around the field a lot, like does a lot of like cardio work. So, um, he was doing that. And then I was just hanging around near the Red Sox dugout. And after he was done doing his cardio work, I'm like, Hey, you got like five minutes to, to chat real quick. And he said, yes. And we, me and him just sit in the Red Sox dugout and, you know, we're chatting up, um, for like five minutes for the interview and then honestly like just five minutes afterwards just just chatting about like whatever like you know um so that was like really special because it's just like i'm sitting in fenway park on a beautiful day no one else is here i'm sitting with one of the best pitchers in the league um chris sale like i'm just imagining in my head and like watching him as a fan on tv when he closed out the world series in 2018 it's just like i'm just talking to him normally and that that's that was a really special one for sure. It was like, that was a surreal moment. Cause I'm like, I know a younger version of me would be really freaking out. 
if I knew I had that type of opportunity. So uh, he's one. And um, let me think. I guess what I like recently, um, I guess not an athlete, but a coach is dealing with Bill Belichick, even though he's kind of tough. That's what I like about it too. I like the challenge of trying to figure out like what works um, to get a good answer out of him. And like, um, yeah, it's just like an experiment. It's like trial and error every time you try to talk to him. So do you gotta be careful because you don't want to go viral for the wrong reasons with uh, Bill Belichick. That can happen sometimes, but um, I've definitely enjoyed like talking to him a lot this uh, Patriot season because um, that, that really is like, that's like a goat, you know, that's like, you're talking to the greatest football coach of all time. That's pretty, uh, pretty neat as a 23 year old. So, and it's funny when I was in college, we used to, I had an interview in class and we used to practice as if we were going to interview Bill Belichick. That was like our practice scenario. So this, and I was only like a couple of years ago, I was in college. And the fact I was, you know, interviewing this year, like for real, it was just like, that was also surreal. Cause I'm like, shoot, I remember practice scenarios interviewing bill belichick and now i'm doing it like for real just a couple years later so i remember saying that to my interviewing teacher the first time i talked to belichick and he like showed his um current interviewing class like the clip and it kind of like was an inspiration for them um that you know maybe one day they could be doing that too pretty soon so um yeah those those couple kind of stand out from recently Oh, that's awesome. Like, I, I, I grew up watching Chris Sale either with playing against the Phillies Dodgers in the World Series. Yeah. Like, as a Dodger fan, that hurt a lot when they, the Dodgers lost in the World Series. I, that year, I'm not going to lie, I hated the Red Sox. Like, I hated <laughs> them. But now I actually love them. Like, it took me a while to, like, get used to them winning. I was like, okay, I don't like this team right now. Like, they really <laughs> won. Like, I just don't like them right now. And so... I think it took me a while to get used to thinking, okay, they actually won the World Series, so get over it. Well, now you got to root for them if your boy Doogie's on our team, so you got to yeah. root for them now a little bit, so. Yeah, you got to root for them now, but, um, <laughs> like, I like I grew up a Philly fan, so I watched Chief Sutley play my whole life. Like, Chief mm -hmm. Sutley's my all-time favorite baseball player of all time. Like, I'm cool. a, I can't explain how much he means to me in general. He's the reason why I love sports, like, He's the person I saw it all for me, basically. And so um, I met him, like, I met him in June of 2019. So like, I was at his retirement ceremony. And, like, it was basically, like, it was during the summer. And we, me and my dad had, like, box seats. Like, so we had to get to find a box seat where he was sitting. And so. Oh, no way. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So we were walking around, like, we were just standing by outside of his, like, um, box. And so we were just waiting for him to come out because I really wanted to meet Chase. And I was so, like, I was just sitting there, like, shaking. Like, I was, like, I was, like, I want to meet him. I was nervous, excited. I didn't know how he was going to be. And I didn't know how mm -hmm. he was would be as a person. He's, he's known as being, like, a cocky kind of player. So I was going to be, I was myself, like, is he going to be cocky in real life? But I was like, like, as much as I love Chase Utley and I'm a big fan, I was like, how am I, I like, how is he in person? I know. They always say, like, never meet your heroes, but, like, you still at the day, end of the day want to. But I know it's like, what type of personality are they? What are they actually like? So um, mm -hmm. I hear you. I'm sure yes. that was really, really cool. Yeah, and so, like, when he was leaving with his family, we were, me and my dad were staying outside the box. And so he was walking our, me and my dad's way. And I immediately looked at my dad shaking, like, like having the biggest smile on my face. I was okay. like, dad, that's Chase Lily right there. He's walking towards us. I was like, don't mess this up right now. Please don't mess this up. Don't embarrass me, please. You're like, this is my moment. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, this is my moment. And I was like, dad, like, please go. And yeah. I'm meeting him. I'm going to meet him. Like, please <laughs> leave. And so I was like, when he was walking my way, I stuck my hand out. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what do you want me to do? I was like, he's like, Kylie, you should take your hand out. I was like, all right, whatever you say. So I was like, I took my hand out. He was like, hi. Then she took my hand. I remember being like, <laughs> shocked. Couldn't get any words out. Like, yeah. My mouth open, like full on open. And he didn't even, my dad shook out his hand too. And he didn't, he didn't even shake my dad's hand. He only shook mine. Oh, <laughs> and I remember 
like seeing the tearing up, and I remember being so in shock, and everywhere I was sort of bawling my eyes out. And my dad was like, Kylie, you shook your hand. Chase always shook your hand. I'm like, don't remind me right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just was dreaming at that moment. I was like, this that's like I never I dreamed that moment ever. Like I've just been dreaming of me and Chase Ali my whole life and that happened. So I was like, how is this like how did this happen right now? Like, exactly. I was just it's, struck. it's so cool and that's why like i love when i see athletes interacting with fans because you never know how much it means to someone when they get that interaction yeah it might be quick from the players end, like 10 to spend 10 seconds saying hi to someone but like that memory can last you know forever so like that's re that's really cool you got that moment with him and um yes yeah, sound uh sound like it was a very special special time and i'm glad your dad was there to witness it too you know be there with you for that so yeah because my dad knew how much he kind of meant to me he was like he's the reason why i became a dog fan in the first place so he was like kylie like this is the best thing that could ever happen in your life for you like this is that's true yeah he played, played for your team like, phillies and dodgers there you go yeah he's like he's like he's like your head is in the clouds. You can now that's out of the way. Do whatever you want now. That's your yeah. bad dream is off your list. Like that's you're like my life is me now, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good, good. I'm good. So um and so you kinda of mentioned before you enrolled to the Dan Patrick School of Park sports casting. You got to work yeah, with yeah. Dan Patrick, Gus Ramsey, Arthur Joseph. What was it like for you to work with them? Uh yeah, that was really special. Like I really credit those two years there as like just giving me the skill sets of how to you know, do this industry, like the knowledge of it. Um, Cause like I said, all those years of minor league baseball, while I did spend a lot of time there and, you know, working, um, I didn't really know what I was doing at the end of the day, but it was good, like life experience. Um, just like dealing with adults and stuff at a young age. But Dan Patrick School is where I really got like the fundamentals of how to be a good interviewer, how to be a uh, strong, you know, have a strong on camera presence, um, even on like the producing side, um, editing, you know, um, stand-ups in the field, like, you name it. You mentioned Arthur Joseph. I worked with him. He was a, a vocal coach, so he worked with us with our voice. Um, so it was just a lot, of, a lot of different things. It was like a big learning curve, like, those two years. It was like, I felt like I, I didn't know anything. I really didn't know anything. But, like, those two years got me really prepared for this industry. And that's why I felt uh, really good going into my job here in Boston. It's just like I felt so prepared, um, even though I was – fresh out of college just like full sail and the Dan Patrick school it's like it's not your normal college it's like almost going to work each day so it's like I already felt like I had a couple of years uh in this industry already even though I was coming out of college so I really credit those two years a lot it was special yeah for sure so do you have anyone that you look up to as a kind of content producer or just kind of in general yeah uh, I mean not to be so biased but like Dan Patrick is one for sure just um you know knowing him forever and I actually knew him before I went to the school um I knew him when um me and his daughter went to the same high school in Connecticut so I, I've known Dan for a while and it was just like ironic that I went to his school um because they didn't have the, it didn't have the Dan Patrick name on it yet it was going to be a sports casting program at Full Sail but it wasn't until I was at Full Sail that I found out later that it was going to be called the Dan Patrick School of Sports Casting so I was like that's that's crazy um how it works out that way um but Dan's just like such a great interviewer. I learned so much from him on keeping things simple um, and being just curious in your interviews. And I love his like um, camaraderie with like all his guests. Like I, he just feels like he knows like all of them so well, whether he does or not. Like he just seems like he's best buddies with all his guests and like gets the most out of them. And he just knows how to create interviews that are both interesting, like entertaining but like also informative as well, where it's advancing the story and you're learning something new. And that's kind of a hard balance. Like some content is more entertaining than not. Some content's more interest, um, informative than not, but it's really hard to create something that's both. Um, so he does that well. Another guy I like, he's not in sports, but his name's Sean Evans. And he does that celebrity like um, interview show, like Hot Ones, um, which is on YouTube. And I just think that's like a brilliant show concept and Sean's kind of the same way, like really good interviewer and good researcher and just has a great camaraderie with his guests. Um, so I definitely love his job. Like I, that, that would be a dream job right there. What Sean Evans is doing hundred percent. And then I just like, you know, like sideline reporters. Um, I could see myself doing that one day. 
and just like people that have helped me like personally in my career, like Jared Greenberg, who's at TNT, um, does in the NBA and Jemai Webster, who works in the Boston area as the Red Sox sideline guy. So um, a lot of sideline reporters I look up to as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, as you kind of said before, you, like, you knew him while you were in high school as, like, your yeah. friends with, like, his daughter and stuff. Like, what was it like for you to kind of join his school thing? Like, he kind of went work there and, like, you knew him before. Like, it became such a thing. Yeah, it was, like, crazy. Like, the first day I saw him um, on campus there because I hadn't seen him actually for a couple of years prior um, till I saw him again at Full Sail. And it was just, like, it's just it's just different dynamic for me and him compared to like the other students because like we have like people in Connecticut we can like talk about and like reference it's like all these other kids you know they they don't have a prior connection with Dan so they, they look up to Dan it's like their first time seeing him whereas like I've been seeing this guy my whole life like I've been to his house before so it's like it's just a different dynamic more than anything it's like catching up the first time I saw him it was like almost like catching up with someone I hadn't seen in a while um if that makes sense so just a different dynamic but it's like it's surreal too because like he is one of the best at what he does and i want i want to be in this industry that he's in so it's just you know personal connection or not like he's a great guy to learn from so um that that really did make it special um and i you know i hope to have a relationship with him like you know the rest of my career and the rest of my life honestly because he's, he's a great guy so um it was special being a part of his program yeah, for sure. Like, I, like, he's, like, the best, like you said, one of the best I ever do at what he does. And so, like, I grew up, like, with two journalists on my dad's side family. There are journalists from my local news station down the road from me. And so, like, people always kind of said to me for, like, it went on for about maybe two years that it went on, that people would say that I would be, like, a great reporter and all those mm -hmm. things. Like, and since I knew a lot about sports, I watched sports so much, and I grew up in a sports atmosphere, and I knew a lot about it, and, and I loved the entertainment industry, so I watched a lot of interviews, yeah. watched red carpets, award yeah, shows, too. Like everything, like, too. Me, like I just, it was my favorite time of year, like, award shows are my favorite time of year, like, yeah, it's my favorite thing to watch, <laughs> and so, like, I basically knew everything that was going on in the entertainment industry, I knew everything that was going on. And so people like will tell me like Kylie, this will be this is a job for you. Like this will be perfect for you since like you love the sports industry and the entertainment industry. You mm -hmm. should pull these things in together. Yeah. And so interview people on both sides and talk to them, build connections, and like live like try to talk to people and try to see if you like it. And you should go for it. I was like, oh yeah, whatever, blah blah blah. I was they. Kind of, I didn't take it seriously until the pandemic hit in, in like April 2021. Um, I was, I had like, I was just sitting down, like, relaxed, watching TV, and it kind of hit me out of nowhere. And I was just sitting there and giving myself, like, should I start a podcast? I don't know what occurred to me. Like, I don't know what I had that thought about a such thing, but it just occurred to me that I was like, Kylie, you should go be a journalist. And you should do that. That would be a good, a big thing for you. Like, it's, like if you don't like it, do something else. We should at oh. least take a try at it. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like it. And so I started it. Like maybe like two weeks later, I didn't know what to get myself into, and I, I it was literally, I was, I didn't know what to do. Like I was like, okay, like I don't know one. Like, I didn't really think about it. I was, like, getting myself into this. Like, I wasn't prepared or anything. Like, I was just, like, dropping things on a page. Like, I was just putting random things on a page. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I interviewed Cooper Searles. He has a big, he has a podcast with a uh, big, Toronto Blue Jays pitcher, Ross Stripling. He, um, oh, Ross, he yeah. He played for the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, he plays for the Blue Jays now, but they don't have the podcast anymore. They ended it a couple months ago. Oh, okay. And so I was like, I was like, this is like the best way to interview, this like best interview to do. Because I grew up listening to him and Ross, like with his podcast and stuff. So I was like, what better interview, first interview to do is him. Like that's the best like yeah. interview to do on the first ever interview. So I talked to him about Ross and the podcast. I was like, okay, this is for me. Like I love this. Like I just immediately came obsessed. And now, almost a year later, I am still doing this. Almost mm -hmm. 40 episodes later, I'm currently, I just launched a website a couple of weeks ago. Cool. And now, I'm basically, 
I'm writing a book right now. Oh, no way. Wow. That's and a, so that's a tall task. That's really cool. Lately, so things are I know. It's addicting, though, but it's, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun connecting with people and especially people you look up to and you're like actually curious about their career. Like that's that makes it like even more fun, in my opinion. And it makes sense, too, why you started during the pandemic. You know, that's it's definitely a time of, that was a time of like self-reflection where, you know, you just at home and with your thoughts and it's like, what would be fun to do? And then like, oh, I can't actually interact with anyone like in person. So like, why not do like a podcast where you do the Zoom interviews and gives you a chance to talk to new people. So I definitely found myself too doing a lot of Zoom interviews during that time and um, just because couldn't interact with anyone in person. But um, I'm, I'm glad you found it. I'm glad you're loving it. And I hope you keep working hard and keep pursuing it for sure. Yeah, thank you. Like I'm thinking, well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pursue this I'm, as I'm older, but I'm thinking about doing some type of way of journalism, either yeah. in, sports, in the sports industry, like or entertainment. Either way, I'm gonna be do something that involves journalism. And mm -hmm. I just actually started writing my book last night. So you know, okay, I, and that reminds me, I actually started writing it last night. I don't want to reveal too much information yet because like okay, we'll hold off. We'll hold off on it and wait yeah, we'll a bit. We'll hold off on that, but I'll let you know this between us. Like I'm not gonna tell like, the whole internet about it, but mm -hmm. like it's. Well, you let me know when it's out. I'll check it out for sure. I'll definitely well, get it. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'm working on it, and so it's amazing. I like I like I don't know why, but it's like I'm really excited about releasing this book, and like I feel it's gonna be something that people can look forward to. I'm gonna be talking about sports in this book. So that's mm -hmm. something I can tell you if I'm writing sports, a little bit of sports in this book in my experience. So this is kind of a little job for people. That's cool. something I can, I can actually say. There you go. I can't really say anything. I else. like it set up with a little tease. I like that. So yeah, you're so good. Yeah, so it's a little smart. tease. Just but, a little tease for them. Yeah. So what is kind of some advice for the, uh, younger generations that would like to be a like, content producer one day? Uh, I mean, you're kind of doing it right now. Like it's just, it's just doing it. It's just getting the reps of the feeling of what it's like to do an interview with someone um, trying to think of questions on the fly or preparing your questions ahead of time, the process of booking someone like, you know, all of that and, and even more aspects of it, just, um, you know, play by play um, standups. Like, you know, you just need that to practice doing it. You don't need a fancy camera equipment or, anything like that. It's just, you could go in front of your mirror. If you want to like practice doing stand-ups, you can literally go in front of your mirror, pretend like you're holding a microphone and, you know, talk about whatever, talk about the Dodgers, talk about the Phillies, you know, do something on Chase Utley. I don't know, something like that. So yeah. it's just at this age. And just when you're starting off, it's just the reps of what it's like. You're not, don't worry about like, uh, like viewership either on, as far as like content, if you're posting stuff online, it's really just practice at this point. And like all the people that are successful in this industry, there's been, hours upon hours of practice and reps um for them to get to the point that they are now so that's what i would say just keep doing what you're doing stuff like this and um just working hard and having fun with it that's probably the most important thing too like especially when you get later on like it becomes like more serious like it's like your career like you're making your living off this it's like sometimes it can feel like maybe like a job for a quick point but you gotta remember like how much fun it is and like this would be like a dream thing that a lot of people would want to be doing too. And it's like a privilege to talk to these athletes or do this or be at this place. So um, just always remember to have like fun with it too. Cause it can be like a lot of work, but um, it's sports at the end of the day. It's not too serious. Yeah, for sure. So you are not only like a content producer, but you also cover media coverage and industry as well. And you kind of got to work with Tana Maru, Charlie D'Amelio, Timothy Doraggio, Brandon Ruth, Ken John, Con Herbert. And as very social media conventions and common cons and stuff like that, what kind of made you want to start covering things in industry and stuff like that? I mean, kind of like you, like I always love both sports and entertainment and I was doing, you know, sports for a while and um, all throughout high school, only sports and even most of my time in college in Florida, but in Orlando, they had a lot of like um, conventions and like those social media events and um, common cons with actors and stuff and like, mm. Like, I just always love, like, entertainment as well. So, like, I was like, all right, let me try to get credentials for that and realize how much fun I had doing that, too, and just how different it was from sports. And, yeah, just, like, it was just cool for me to talk to my favorite actors as well. It's like, I get to talk to my favorite sports athletes, and now I get to talk to my favorite actors and people in the social media space, you know, YouTubers that I like watching. So it's like, 
just best of both worlds. So I definitely wanted, I just wanted those like life experiences and those relationships on that side too. And, you know, sports and entertainment do cross over a lot too. So it's not like that crazy of a gap either. Yeah. It's not like I'm interviewing politicians and then sports. I don't know. Like it's they're kind of closely connected in a weird way. You know, you see, entertainment celebrities, they all think sports athletes are cool. Sports athletes all think a actors are really cool. So there's a lot of crossover. Um, but yeah, so just started pursuing that. And that's when, what I kind of focus my YouTube channel. Now it's like, a lot of like entertainment with actors and social media creators and chatting with them. And it's just my own thing and get to travel. I, w I was in LA last year and did some stuff out there. Um, and just that wouldn't happen if I didn't have my YouTube channel and build those relationships on the entertainment side. So I love that I can hit up my favorite Red Sox player and I like hit up my favorite actor that's on a show that I like, you know, stuff like that. So like even yesterday, um, the show Ozark on Netflix dropped and my buddy Kevin L. Johnson is on that show as one of the main recurring characters. And it's like, I built that relationship with Kevin interviewing him when like four years ago or whenever the first season came out of that show, I'm the biggest Ozark fan, but now it's just like cool for me. It's like, now I got a buddy from that show. Cause I've been staying in touch with him ever since. It's like, I just like having relationships on both sides. So that's why I pursued it. And uh, yeah, I've been able to meet some cool people. Like Charlie was a big one. Charlie D'Amelio. Mm -hmm. Enjoy Tana Mojo a lot. Ken Jong's obviously been in Hollywood for a while. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun too. Just very different, but I enjoy it. Uh, no, honestly, like equally as well. Yeah, for sure. Like I interview like some of my favorite artists as well, like Mass and Walkin. She is like a singer songwriter. She was on The Voice. Cool. Yeah. No wait, she was on American Idol. Never mind, American Idol. American Idol. Okay. So I was I was thinking a completely different thing, and I was like. And I was a big fan of her before I even interviewed her. I listened to her music every single day. Like, I saw wow. the American Idol. Like, I listened to her so much. She was one of the biggest inspirations. I got to interview her. And I was, like, so happy. Like, that was one of my dream interviews. And I got to interview Kate Ways. She was, like, a child actress. She was in, like, all okay. kinds of kid movies. Like, she was a child actress. She was, I was a fan of her. Like, a big fan of her as well and i seen her in commander in chief it's about like the first woman president and all those kind of things and so i was a big fan of her and i got to interview her and i'm still like she's one of my good friends and we're still good cool. in contact and to think like i'm the friend with some of the people that i've been a fan of since before i even interviewed them is quite crazy mm -hmm. you know I, like, I just remember thinking like this is crazy i'm interviewing like two people that I loved and adored since, like, as long as I've, like, been a fan of them. Yeah. So I was like, this is insane. But do you have anyone that you have, like, since you kind of covered the entertainment industry and stuff, like, do you have, like, any, any interview that kind of stuck out to you a little bit? On the entertainment side? Um, that's a good question. I mean, just, like, the experience-wise, like, you you mentioned her but like tana mojo she's like a big youtuber personality she's just like really out there and she's just yeah. a lot of fun so like uh it was like a wild uh experience interviewing her she's kind of like what you see on camera in person too so she's just a, like a lot of fun um i enjoyed an interviewing an actor named bart johnson he's in high school musical he plays oh, coach yeah. I, am, I actually love Bart Marjo. like he's so yeah yeah he's a funny dude fun. Yeah, so, like, I mean, that was, like, a really cool one because, like, I, I grew up watching High School Musical with my buddies and stuff. Like, every, everyone watched High School Musical when I was younger. So that was, like, kind of a... High School Musical. Though. Yeah, exactly. Who had to watch High School Musical? So that was a surreal one. It's like, not, like, I have been able to build a good relationship, a relationship with him, too. So hopefully next time I'm in L.A., you know, say what's up to him real quick. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, like, been a lot of cool ones. Like, the Ken Jong one was really cool just because he's been a lot of big-time stuff. Hangover. Um, he's a judge on The Masked Singer now. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ken. Um, Charlie one was probably, is probably my most talked-about interview that, like, gets brought up um, just in general, sports or entertainment, just because I interviewed her. I was her third-ever interview, and the day I interviewed her, she had just hit 10 million followers, which is still a lot. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But for her, that was like really early in the process, yeah. And it was like uh, very I spent early on in her career, like she yeah, grew yeah, very quickly. Like, like, like I've been, I'm a big Charlie D'Amelio fan. Oh, I'm a big D'Amelio fa fan. Yeah, once they all went viral, 
And so, like, once she became posted on TikTok with her sister, she just started to blow up. And every, yeah. every day, she just started, make, keeps making a million followers every single day. So she kept growing. Well, that's the thing. It was so crazy at the time. It was like every day she's getting at least one or two million followers a day at that point. So she reached 100 million really quickly. But yeah. it was just cool to spend time with her and her family like for the two days at this meet and greet event that they had and like before she was like really as big as she is now and just hanging out with them. And yeah. And then like, I see her a couple of weeks later, she's on Jimmy Fallon. I see her in a David Dobrik video. It's like, I remember I talked to her in the interview, like how she wanted to meet J Jennifer Lopez. And like a month later, she was like in the Super Bowl, um, like dancing with, with Jennifer Lopez and like met her. So it's just like their life obviously is insane now. And it's, they met everyone and everyone knows them now. Um, but that was that was a big one because like yeah i kind of got to talk to her early before like some of the big big shows have spoken with her and stuff like that so um still have a relationship with that family uh like the parents mainly um so that's been cool to have and uh, i'm always happy for their success they're from connecticut as well not too far from where i grew up so uh we always have that connection too so it's i'm always happy for their success and wish them well yeah for sure like, i basically i'm a big charlie d'amelio and basically i'm a huge the million fan like everyone in the family I absolutely love and support like they're amazing inspire me at every single thing like once I saw the video of, like Charlie Milio dancing with J Lo I was like I'm yeah. so jealous. like I was like so jealous of her dancing with J Lo because I do want my chances to dance with J Lo because J Lo is my my biggest one of my biggest inspiration so like in terms of dancing singing everything like you name it and so like, I was so jealous of her. Bart Johnson, I grew up watching Bart Johnson since I was a baby, I will say. <laughs> a baby, I will say. Because I watched it in a high school musical. I was obsessed with high school musical. I yeah. watched it every single day, everything. So I was basically obsessed with high school musical. I was a big Zac Efron fan. So that was kind of like <laughs> a little more leaning. There you go. I get that now. I get I get why you're rewatching that movie. Yeah. Zac yeah, Efron, he's so, the like, man. I basically grew up with him and like Zac Efron, all that's Hudgens and all that cast. Mm -hmm. And like they all are my one of my biggest inspirations. So everyone is like people that I follow, especially the the Milios, like everyone I like they are the biggest impacts on me. Either, either it's like not a lot or like a little bit. Everyone has made a little impact on me. No matter what they are, they made an impact. But mm -hmm. like, what was the kind of like your experience working with Charlie D'Amelio though? You have to kind of explain it before in her family. How, like, where were they like kind of like to work with? It's funny because like they're just, they were, I mean, they still are too, just like a very normal family because that's what they were. They're a no, they were a normal family living in Connecticut, you know, just doing their own thing. And then it just suddenly started blowing up their TikTok. It's not like they planned for it. It just kind of happened. Charlie started going viral. So it was like, they're just very normal people with a really extreme, crazy lifestyle thing blowing up on the side. And obviously that's, you know, they've made this a full-time thing now, but um, that's why it was kind of so cool. They're very down to earth, very nice, um, kind. They spend time talking to you. Like, like they're your buddy, you know? So like, it was, it was really cool spending time with them. Um, I like Dixie too. Dixie's really quirky. So she's like, she's pretty funny, uh, to talk to. Um, all, all of them are really sweet. So I got nothing bad to say. And it was just, like I said, it was a special time, um, getting to know them early, um, and still keep the relationship with them. And, um, I haven't seen them since, unfortunately, but like, hopefully you'll see them down the line. I know actually they were here in Boston. Um, Dixie was performing for, um, jingle something oh, the jingle, jingle ball. ball yeah jingle, jingle ball. ball um at td garden um but i was in florida at the time but if i was in florida i definitely would have like got credentials and go to that and say what's up but um you know it just didn't work out the timing but yeah it was just um really cool getting to know them and uh, like i said i wish them well yeah for sure so the kind of the final question for an interview is you're invited by the content connect her and media to be featured oh yeah at the Atlanta Gen Z. <laughs> social summit in 2019 what was that experience like for you that was cool because i'm always going to so many events as like a media person or as like a reporter but this one i was invited as like the talent that like people are there to like meet and i was there to like speak um on like panels i hosted like a workshop about like personal branding there and uh it was just like other cool you know people like my age or younger like in the gen z space that are like doing cool things so like annie rose who's a big time youtuber was there uh, an actor jacks malcolm who's in 
uh, CW's Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Uh, the big one, big uh, person was Lexi Rabe, who is Morgan Stark in uh, the Marvel Avengers Endgame, uh, like Iron Man's daughter. Um, and the event happened like maybe like a couple weeks after Endgame came out. So that was like really like peak popularity. Yeah. Um, so that was like cool that she was there and getting to hang out with her. Uh, she's really funny. Like she's like six year old kid. Is, like super, just says whatever. It's like super cute. Um, and then, yeah, I was just like honored to be invited to that. So it was like cool to, you know, people there take your pictures. You get interviewed. Um, you, we had a meet and greet event too with the fans. So it's like you take pictures with people and sign autographs. So it's like, I really enjoy like people that like recognize me too from my work on YouTube. But it was just kind of cool to be on the other side and get some recognition. So I would love to do like another event like that one day. So any, any events hit me up. I'm, I'm down to do it. But yeah, it was cool to go to Atlanta for that. Yeah, for sure. That's my dream is to do meet and greets and all those things. I'm hoping, hoping something happens to me sometime next, maybe like two years or so, whatever that happens. But I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It means so much. I and really enjoy speaking with you. You're amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, thank you, Kylie. I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing as well. Um, appreciate talking to you and uh, for the invite for your show. Of course. Thanks so much. Let's speak soon, for sure. Bye. Take care.